A very good evening to all the brothers and sisters uh, in Christ. We thank our Lord for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to study His wonderful words of life. Last week, uh, we studied about, uh, you see, the continuation of the chapter about church, the true church, who is the true church. We saw it is a little flock and uh, we also saw its number. Can anybody tell me what is the number of the little flock? One lakh forty thousand. Very good. The one lakh forty-four thousand. So these will be the people who are going to reign with Christ for a thousand years. So uh, the real faithful Christians are uh, these people. So the Lord is looking uh, at uh, these people in the gospel age. So last week we saw that uh, many are called, so few are chosen. And we saw the faithful class. So it is not only that uh, we be of the called class. It is not only that we make ourselves of the chosen class. It is very, very and more important to be of that uh, faithful class. And that faithful class is 1,44,000. So if you see the 1,44,000 seems to be a very small number. But uh, you see, if you compare and uh, you see, uh, take the analysis, in 2023 years, it's like selecting 71% per year. That means almost uh, 6 persons per month. That means almost a week, every person is being selected. So, there is a lot of opportunity. A lot of vacancies are there. So, you might think, uh, oh, even in uh, 2000 years, this class is not selected. Yes, uh, this, uh, this seems to be so. But, uh, you see, yeah, that is a very, very precious uh, position and a very important position. And uh, still vacancy are there means uh, that clearly proves that uh, not uh, all who are called uh, can make the electoral English sure, but uh, they can put their efforts. They, if they are faithful, definitely God will definitely give the reward. Just because nobody is there, God won't give the reward to anybody else. See, until God finds the faithful class, this uh, door will still be open. So, we can see that uh, is it the only class of people who are going to uh, go to heaven? Because we saw last time that uh, many are called, few are chosen. But among the chosen, it is only the few people, the one like 44,000 who are faithful. But what about the rest of the people? You see, many consecrate their life, many devote their life to the Lord, saying that I will do thy will. But many fall back. So only few people will win the prize. So, what about the rest of the people? You see, so is there uh, any other class you see? Yes, there is other class of people who go to heaven. Do you see the divine plan chart? There is a small pyramid box that is called as M below that category. N. So, last time we saw the category N, but today we're going to see about the category M. Who are these? So, these are the consecrated people but uh, who lack faithfulness to God. So this one in the Bible is called as the great multitude. So the great multitude, you see, huh? the innumerable company who consecrate their life to God. And that is given to us in Revelation 7 chapter. So let us read Revelation 7, 9. Anil Budar, can you read Revelation 7, 9? Yeah. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, all kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Very good. So, after this, uh, I behold, after the selection of the lakh and 44,000, I behold the great multitude which no man can number of all the nations of the earth. So, who are this uh, great multitude? Why they can't be numbered? You see, uh, does it mean that God himself cannot number also? No. You see, the innumerable company whom no man can number signifies the unlimited consecration. Even if the whole world comes to consecrate the life to God, 
in this gospel age, God would never stop them. But there will be a reward only for like and 44,000 who are in likeness of Christ. Therefore, the no man can number means it's unlimited consecration. Anybody can consecrate, you see, and devote the life, sacrifice the life to the Lord. You see, therefore it says, these are before the throne. You see, huh? putting the white robes. Why they are standing before the throne? What is the Lord promised to the faithful class? You see, the faithful class are promised to sit on the throne along with Jesus. Not that they stand before the throne. So read Revelation 3.21. Revelation 3.21. Uh, Joel Buddha, can you read Revelation 3.21? To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome, and I am set down with my father in his throne. Very good. So, you see? What did the Lord promise? To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Not that you're going to stand before the throne. So, do you see? What do you say? Huh? Sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame. So, therefore, they brethren, there is a, a difference uh, uh, between these two class of people. Uh, you see? So, for the faithful overcoming class, they will be given an opportunity, you see, huh? where? To sit with the Lord on the throne. But these people are standing before the three means what? Uh, that means they lost, they lost the opportunity to sit uh, on the throne with our Lord. That means they are standing before the throne means what? Uh? So who will be standing before the throne? The one who will be sitting on the throne or the king and the princess? But one will be standing uh, you see, before the throne, these are the servants class of the brethren. These are can't be rulers, but they will be servant class. Therefore, overcoming is important. So, what do you mean by overcoming? That means, uh, is there no obstacle in the life? No. There will be a lot of obstacles, obstacles, there will be a lot of trouble, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of trials. Uh, you see, from all the angles, there will be a lot of pressure. But uh, the little flock will overcome all these things. Why? For the Lord's sake, they will lay down their life for everything. You see, for they will be ready to sacrifice everything for the Lord. You see, did not Jesus have uh, trouble in his life? He had so much of trouble. He had so much of pain. You see, but that was not because of sin and sickness, but because in the service of the Lord. The way he lived a holy life, he suffered so many persecutions. He had so many hurdles in his life and all. But he overcame. How did Jesus overcome? Jesus never overcame grumblingly. He overcame, you see, voluntarily. That is the difference there was between the great multitude and lack and 44,000, the little flock. The little flock, they cheerfully endure all these things voluntarily. They seek opportunities uh, to serve the Lord voluntarily. They sacrifice everything for the Lord voluntarily. But the great multitude... They do everything grumblingly. You see, little bit, little bit, little bit, they, what they sacrifice, you see, they, you see, grumblingly do it. They don't do it voluntarily, but only when they are forced to do it, they will do it. That is the reason they will lose the crown, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, we all have sacrificed, we all have made a covenant with the Lord that I will offer my body as a sacrifice. So we have to offer, we have to leave our talk. But the people who don't leave the talk, uh, you see, these are the people who will lose their crown. You see, they don't lay down their life. Uh, what does Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, lay down his life, carry the cross, you see, take responsibility for Christ's sake and follow him and be followers of Jesus daily, carrying the cross daily, dear brethren. Therefore, lot of, uh, you see, obstacles will come. These need to be overcome. So, what are the obstacles? Let us read Romans 8, chapter 35 to 37. Romans 8, chapter 35 to 37. Uh, Munna, sister, can you read? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? 
और फेमिन और नेकेडनेस और पेरियल और सोर एज इट इज रिटर्न फॉर दाई सेक वी आर किल्ड ऑल द डे लॉन्ग वी आर अकाउंटेड एज सी फॉर द स्लॉटर ने इन ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी आर मोर देन कॉन्क्यूर कॉन्क्यूर through him that loved us okay. who shall separate us from the love of christ tribulation distress persecution famine nakedness peril sword yes these are the things uh, you see these are the tribulations uh, that will come in our life uh, which will try to separate us from the love of christ you know what will the faithful little flock do they will cling on to the love of christ dear brother any tribulation any distress let it be financial mental you say health issues you see let it be anything or persecutions famine no food no proper food no proper standard in the society nakedness even though there is no proper clothing or homes to stay they will remain faithful to the lord perils sorts you see they take risk for the lord you see Ah, that's what he says now. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. That is living sacrifice day, brethren. Daily, all the day long, to be killed for the Lord. How? That we need to be accounted as slaughter, a sheep for the slaughter. That's what Jesus did. No, Jesus was taken to the slaughter as a sheep. He kept dumb. It never opened his mouth. Isn't it, dear brethren? that is how he did the lord's will similarly the difference between the great multitude and the little flock you see na yeah, they are more than conquerors more than conquerors means what uh, not that uh, when something comes they overcome they will be waiting for the opportunity to overcome to fight each and every obstacle so to do the lord's will they brethren that is the character of christ uh, that is what our lord did uh, you see jesus never kept quiet uh, jesus never waited but uh, you see he put Uh, himself forward uh, you see he laid everything back side uh, you see uh, looking forward uh, you see that's how uh, he finished his course uh, therefore the great multitude are not like this only when they are put into trouble only when there is a problem that is the time they seek the lord otherwise they will be living a worldly life just for name sake they will worship god just for name sake they believe in jesus that's all but uh, nothing will be from their heart only when there is trouble in the life only when there is pain sorrow sickness any any sorts of disturbance then only they will come to the lord but once the problem is solved again they will return to the world you see and uh, you see why because of the fear fear of losing something and satan tries to grip them in his own bondage read hebrews 215 hebrews 215 uh, roshan brother and kamal sister uh can you read is it possible for you to read do you have network yes brother thank you sister how are you after so many days nice to see you nice to see you too god bless and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage very good sister see who so the fear of death the fear of death means what ta fear of losing life uh, just because of the fear you see uh, they will uh, try to go to bondage surrender to so many trials and uh, tribulations and uh, then uh, you see hence uh, what does the revelation say they had palm uh, branches in their hand what is the meaning of palm branches you see in the olden days and uh, during the days of david and jesus and all whenever a king used to go for war after winning the war he used to enter the city but while entering the city you see it you ran uh, uh, there the people used to welcome the warriors uh, people used to welcome the king after winning the war with palm branches in their hand uh, you see that is how jesus was welcomed no uh, what did jesus uh, 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 do when he came to jerusalem he came on a ass and the people took the palm branches uh, and cried out saying king of israel king of israel hosanna hosanna to the son of david is it so that was a sign of victory so let us read john 12 13 john 12 13 uh, romy sister can you read john 12 13 
took took branches of the palm palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna. cried Hosanna, blessed is the king of the Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Okay. Blessed uh, is the king uh, that cometh in the name of the Lord. So it's a sign of victory. So the great multitude having uh, palm branches in their hand means what? Uh, that means they are also conquerors. Uh, they have also won. But how have they won? Only when they are put into trouble. Uh, not voluntarily as a little flock. Uh. So only when there is pressure, that is the time they do it. Uh. You see, dear brother? Huh? And uh, what does he say? They were wearing white robes, it seems. What is the meaning of white robes? The same question is asked by an elder. You see, let us read Revelation 7, chapter 13 to 14. Uh, Sunita, sister, can you read Revelation 7, chapter 13 to 14? And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, sir tho, thou knowest, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Ah, see, what did the, the reply came? He said, These are they which have come out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made white. In how? In great tribulation. So, what is the meaning of this one? Why they have washed their robes in the great tribulation? What is this robe? What was the problem in the robe? Why did it become dirty? And why did they, you see, wash with the blood of lamb? And when? In great tribulation. What is this tribulation? Dear brethren, you know, we all know a robe in the Bible means the righteousness. You see, we are all sinners before God. So we don't have any standing before God. We are all sinners. All our righteousness, you see, whatever good things we do, it is our filthy rags before our Lord. You see, we can't stand before our God. Isaiah 64, 6. Isaiah 64, uh, 6. Uh, Brother uh, Kamal, can you read Isaiah 64, 6? Come on, brother, you're there. Can you read? Okay. Amar, brother, can you read? Isaiah 64, 6. 64, 6. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but, we, but we are all as an unclean things, and all our righteousnesses are all are as a filthy phrase and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities are like the wind have taken taken us away. See? All our righteousness has a filthy rags. But once when we believed Jesus, what happened? God gave the robe of righteousness to us. So, because of this robe of righteousness, we are, have standing before God. We can stand before Him. You see, what is this righteousness? This is imputed to us when we believe in Jesus. God gives us this robe of righteousness. He removes of all our sins. He cleanses us of all our sins. And He considers us as pure in Christ. Read Revelation 19.8. Revelation uh, 19 8. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Revelation 19 8? And to her was granted that she should be arid in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Okay. The fine linen is righteousness of the saints. So, righteousness. Uh, how did he get to it? The Lord has given to us. Because of faith in Jesus. Isaiah 61.10. Joel brother, can you read Isaiah 61.10? I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in with the 
garments of salvation he hath covered me with the robe rob of righteousness as the bridge bridegroom decayeth himself with the ornaments and as a bridge adorneth herself with her jewels you see huh the robe of uh, righteousness he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments you see god has given us his righteousness dear brother so it is white white robe so white robe means what a white shirt huh? we should keep it neat and clean huh? but as we are living in this world what will happen to this robe small small spots will come here and there black spots how whenever we are in the world if is sin in our thoughts if he is sin in our words if is sin in our action a spot comes naturally on the robe of righteousness you see huh? thoughts means small will come words means it will be much bigger if you put it in action it will be much more bigger then what will the lord do so we can't go to heaven we can't stand before the lord with this you see filthy spots sir so what do we need to do immediately we need to go to the throne of grace and mercy and cleanse it off thoroughly you see if you ask forgiveness from the lord with a sincere heart you see with a dedicated heart saying that it is out of weakness that we committed such things and if we sincerely repent and turn to god what will happen all our sins will be washed away that's what the bible says see that believe in jesus his sins are washed away means what not just believing but believing it from the heart you see huh? claiming it from the heart you see you see confessing it from the heart to the lord you see not to human beings and what happens that this will be gone away but when should we do this cleansing we should do it on the spot immediately imagine you are wearing a white shirt a, a black uh, ink if it falls on our uh, shirt or if a tea or a coffee it falls on our shirt what will we do will we wait to clean it uh, till the end of the day no we will immediately rush uh, immediately wash it with water thoroughly that is the way we should be with our uh, you see our uh, robe of righteousness dear brother and the same way immediately we should clean ourselves uh, you see if you ask the lord for forgiveness he is always ready to clean it up but the grave multitude are not such way you see they accumulate all the spots till when till the end of the day they will tell they will pray only in the morning or else the next prayer will be only when they are going to sleep in between they don't even have that attitude of prayer also attitude of turning and coming to god I always maintain trying to maintain the holiness they won't be having that thought and christ likeness in their mind at all they'll go only in the night and tell oh lord thank you for everything thank you for this day okay bye bye tata i'll go and sleep because i'm very much tired no each and everything has to be shared with our father you see who knows uh, us better than him so that is how the cleansing will happen and some people are much more worst they will come to the lord only when when Uh, during uh, some uh, function some convention some meeting big big meeting uh, christians do no they come for christmas or they come for uh, good friday uh, or a new year or they won't come to the church at all uh, that is how they keep their clothes what dirty imagine if you are wearing a white cloth if it gets completely dirty uh, can we wash it uh, easily in our house no if it's a small spot we can if we can clean it immediately it will be very easy or as if we keep on accumulating our white shirt will become different color shirt then how do we wash it we usually give it for dobi you see dry wash how does he wash it he puts lot of washing soda put it in hot water you see rinse it twist it heat it smash it until the stains are completely removed you won't keep quite at all that is how our lord we do and deal with this great multitude they will be thrown you see into much pain and sorrow and trouble in their life not at the end of the great time of trouble in their life in the end of the life they will be given lot of pain you see how why because they need to cleanse their robe that is why it says 
they went into great tribulation and cleansed it with the blood of Jesus. Read Malachi 3rd chapter 2 and 3. Malachi 3rd chapter 2 and 3. Uh, Russian sister or Kamal brother, can you read? Okay. Malachi. Malachi 3rd chapter 2 and 3. Last book in Old Testament. Okay. Uh, ah, read, sister. Read, 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 sister. Read, read, no problem. Okay, somebody else can read. Sunita, sister. Anil, brother. But who may abide the day of his going, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and pu pu purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. You see? Eh? How shall our Lord uh, come at the second coming? He shall be like a refiner's fire. So if you put into fire, what will happen? The gold will get purified. Similarly, Jesus will purify him. He is like a fuller soap, washing soda. Eh? When they will use this uh, soap? Very terrible and very you say, dangerous soap, no? Washing soda. Who use it only on table clothes, uh, very dirty clothes. So similarly, Jesus will filter and cleanse the church as him. Sir. How? They will put into trouble. When they fall into trouble, that is the time they will seek the Lord. They will turn to the Lord. Oh Lord, I am in trouble. Please help me. Huh? As they come, draw more and more to Christ in tribulation. What will happen? Uh? You see, slowly their mind, their thoughts, everything will change off. And they will cleanse their robe. You see, therefore, uh, tribulations are there for everybody. But uh, in this tribulation, how the people react, how they take it, that makes the difference. Read 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 11 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter 11 to 15. Uh, Rosh sister, can you read now? Is it okay? Okay. Uh, Muna sister, can you read? For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Mm. For the day shall declare it, because mm. it it shall be revealed by fire. Ah, you see, sister, what does he say? No man can lay any other foundation than Jesus. Upon Jesus Christ, we need to build this structure, it seems. The structure of Christ's character, Christ's likeness. Now, how do we build it? We can build with various types of materials. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay and stubble. Imagine building a home with wood, hay and stubble is very easy, very cheap. But uh, to build a home with gold, silver, precious stones, is it easy? No, it's very, very expensive to need to build with gold. You need to put so much of efforts. It will cost much for you. You need to do so much of sacrifice. That is the way with consecration. If your character has to be like gold, if your character has to shine like silver, like Christ-likeness, then you need to spend more. It will cost you more. It will cost your life. 
it is a sacrifice to the Lord. Your life should be a sacrificial life. But to build it with just a hood, hand stubble, a very easy, simple cater which burns so easily. Some people, you know, when they are put into small trials, what will happen? Immediately, they will fume off. They will fire off. You see, they will be burnt. What will be burnt? The character will be burnt. It will only be for, only for, you see, eh? only for uh, sake of eh? showing, uh, just for show off. Uh, they really won't have that character inside. How will it come to them? Once it is put into trouble, that is the time the real character will be very manifest. If the real genuine character, likeness of Christ, it will uh, shine like eh? gold, silver, and precious. Imagine all these things you put into fire, what will happen? Huh? The wood and stubble will get destroyed, but uh, gold will shine the much brighter. So similarly, uh, when we are put into fire, trials in our life, we need to shine our character. We should show our character, character of Christ-likeness. You see, the gold is so heated at the temperature, the goldsmith, if you see the Melting gold is image, the crystal clear image has to be reflected. So similarly, when we are into tribulation, that is the time we should show our character, not when everything is good for us. So what is the, the Bible says? It says, every man's work shall be tested. And how God shall test it? It is by fire. You see, and the fire shall try every man's work. You see, fire will try it seems each and every man's work. If it is really genuine character likeness of Christ or fake, it will be tested by fire. How? Continue, sir. Munaster, from where is stopped to continue? Huh? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he, he himself shall be saved, it so as by fire. Mm, if any man's work abide, eh? he shall receive a reward. If he is faithful, he shall receive a reward of divine nature. To be with our Lord and rule with our Lord, sitting on his throne for a thousand years. But if any man's work shall be burned, that means his scatter is destroyed, we can see it. He shall suffer a loss. What is the loss? He shall be saved. But yes, so as by fire. That means he shall lose the reward. You see, he shall suffer that loss. But he shall be saved. Not for that uh, little flock, but for the little uh, great multitude of the Therefore, you know what will happen? During uh, the end of the life, God will see. He will more and more years of consecration. See, to develop. Uh, but once they don't develop... Uh, in Christ likeness, even after many years of consecration, God gives him to the hand and handed over them to the devil, Satan. Imagine what will Satan do us? Huh? Read First Corinthians 5 5. First Corinthians 5 5. Uh, Romi, sister, or Amar brother, can you read? To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. To deliver such a one unto Satan, it seems. God will deliver such a one to Satan. Why? For destruction of the flesh. Flesh means for fleshly character. Worldly character. All these things has to be destroyed. Once without destruction, nobody can go to heaven. Nobody can rule with our Lord. But destruction has to take place here. The little flock, they will destroy their own flesh. But the great multitude, their flesh will be destroyed by God. And that's why that is spirit, Holy Spirit, the new creature might be saved in the day of the Lord. Because God doesn't want them to lose. You see, but they want, God wants them to be saved. But not of the little flock, but of the great multitude. Therefore, this is the destruction of the flesh. But Little flock is the sacrifice of the flesh. Hence, uh, what happened to them? What happened to the great multitude? Revelation 7, chapter 15 to 17. Revelation 7, chapter 15 to 17. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read? Revelation 7, chapter 15 to 17. Joel 
Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them they shall hunger no more neither thirst any 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 more neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall free free them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes you see they shall serve him day and night why now they have not served they wouldn't have served the lord now you see they would have pretended to serve they wouldn't have served the lord faithfully now dear brethren hence they are standing before the throne they have to serve the lord there if we would have served the lord now faithfully then we can reign with him sitting on the throne you see and uh, huh? what do you say god shall wipe away all the tears why tears sir they will be in tears sir why because they lost the crown dear brother they will cry 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 lord have mercy please please give me one more opportunity where can be given opportunity was given but they did not use it dear brother now we have the opportunity to cry to weep you see now if we cry now if you are in sorrow now if you are in tears you see god will say okay okay my son okay okay my child have one more opportunity you see opportunity is there now if we cry but after everything is over after the door is getting closed even if we cry with a lot of tears you see no use god won't give us back the reward God won't give us that opportunity again, dear brethren. But now opportunity is there, so tribulation is there for everybody. It's the difference that how we take it. Read John sixteen thirty three. Ashish brother, can you read John sixteen thirty three? Okay. Uh, Anil brother, can you read John sixteen thirty three? These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You see, huh? I have spoken unto you that you may have peace. Where? In the tribulation you should have peace. He says, now in the world they shall be tribulation. You shall have tribulation means what? you may have it might come no you shall means it is a must you will definitely have it but no need to worry don't get afraid no no don't get afraid we have good cheer have faith in the lord he has loved us he has given us his son what not he will give you imagine christ died on the cross for us he has given us everything if you are faithful if you ask help from him what he will do he will help us He said, "I have overcome the world. Don't worry. I will be with you till the end of the world, dear brethren." When Peter was sinking in the sea, what did the Lord do? Peter cried, "Oh, Master, help me!" What did Jesus do? Did Jesus say, "Oh, you are fit to live a little faith. Go drown yourself. I can't help you." Did he say, "No"? Huh? He said, "Oh, you are fit to little faith." He lifted his hand. Why do you doubt? Ah, so similarly, we should not doubt, dear brethren. Have faith in the Lord. Tribulations, trials, these are not important. These are there only to test us, to prove our faithfulness to our Master. How we, how much we love our Master? What limit? What extent we can go to please Him? That is a test for us, dear brethren. Therefore, you see the great potato. They lose all these opportunities, trying to live a worldly life. getting the ropes completely dirt you see when they will be standing for the throne dear brethren we still have opportunity even if we cry god will help us so the lord bless these words so